Welcome to this fourth Sunday of Easter online service from St. Columba's Church in Ennis with the churches of Kilnasula and Christ Church, Spanish Point. It is wonderful that others are joining us from around Ireland, the UK, USA, Canada and elsewhere and this is very much your service as well. We are delighted that you are spending this time with us and we hope and pray that you and all your loved ones remain happy, safe and well. Well, we continue to live through these days of isolation and lockdown, separated from one another and from our churches. But we can also reflect that we are more than just our buildings, much as we value them. It is our prayer together and our loving concern for one another that keeps us together and keeps us strong. We follow the service of the Word booklets that you can see and download on the website. You can also view or download and print the pew sheet for this Sunday, which includes some suggested hymns on YouTube. The links have a choir and lyrics for you to sing along to, so please feel free to pause this service from time to time if you'd like to include the hymns. So we start our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Together we say, One thing have I asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? We seek him with all our heart. Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? We seek him with all our soul. Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? We seek him with all our mind. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? We seek him with all our strength. Christ, have mercy. And so we say together, Christ as a light illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield over shadow and hold me. Christ below me. Christ above me, Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and around me, lowly and meek, yet all-knowing, all-powerful. Christ is a light, Christ is a shield. Christ be with me on my left and my right. And so we pray. God of all power, you called from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed one another with understanding through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many were baptized and were added to the community. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many signs and wonders were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Here ends the reading. 
Now hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In chapter 9 of St. John's Gospel, we heard how Jesus angered the religious authorities by healing a blind man on the Sabbath. Not only that, he accused them of being the ones who were truly blind. For those their eyes could function, they purposefully refused to see and to believe. Well, if that annoyed them, he is about to insult and enrage them even more and make them want to stone him to death. For now, John reports that Jesus uses a powerful metaphor to drive the point home. In Palestine, sheep belonging to villagers roamed freely during the day, but were brought into a common enclosure at night to protect them from wild predators. And each morning the shepherd called his sheep from the pen and they would follow him back to good pasture. The sheep would recognize and trust the voice of their own shepherd. They knew him and he knew them. And those in the early church listening to John's Gospel would have picked up all sorts of references that are harder for the modern hearer to recognize. For in this passage there are also references to Genesis and Psalm 23 and the concept of the Good Shepherd. But there are also implicit taunts to the leaders of the day, with references drawn from Ezekiel 34 and also Zechariah and Zephaniah, where the leaders of the people were castigated for being bad shepherds who fattened themselves at the expense of the sheep selfish, irresponsible, and false. Using an oblique, almost riddle approach, the accusation is subtle and requires a certain familiarity with scripture to understand, but the barbs would have gone home with the Pharisees and the scribes, for they were being likened to wolves feeding on the people, false prophets who would lead them to ultimate destruction. Whereas Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is even prepared to lay down his life to protect those in his care, he alone will gather them and bring them home to safety. And then he uses a second image. He is not only like the shepherd who leads his flock, but he is also like the gate through which they must pass if they want to reach good pasture. He is the way through, the route to life. 
Now, having set the scene, I would like to focus in on a very particular section of today's Gospel. In fact, one particular sentence and moreover, just one word within that sentence. It is the following. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And the particular word is abundantly. Well, it sounds wonderful, life abundantly. But if we are not careful, we can be tempted to relegate the word to the sort of vague coziness that advertisers so often employ, rather like Coca-Cola's It's the Real Thing, Nike and Just Do It, and L'Oreal Because You're Worth It. Incidentally, at the end of L'Oreal's advertisements, I'm never quite sure that I should be flattered or insulted that I'm only worth about 12 euros. But we do the word itself and Christ's teaching a tremendous disservice if we merely like the sound of it and then move on. It requires some thought. In fact, it requires a lifetime of thought. For in that simple word lies the very core of our existence, the very meaning of our lives. We need to ask just what is life abundantly? The Collins Concise Dictionary gives the first meaning of the word abundant as existing in plentiful supply. But Jesus doesn't seem to be guaranteeing us a long life or lots of it or even a plentiful supply of human beings. He is, after all, speaking about life abundantly and not abundant life. But the second meaning of abundance in the dictionary starts to move us closer to the truth. It speaks of fullness or benevolence and gives, as an example, the phrase from the abundance of my heart. In fact, this definition can offer us an important insight. The modern world can all too easily believe that abundance is something on the outside and something that should come to us. Abundant riches, abundant possessions, abundant property. But Jesus is speaking of an abundance of quite a different order. It is an abundance of the interior, an abundance on the inside at the very centre of ourselves. It is an abundance of knowing that we are being truly the person we are meant to be, of feeling at one with oneself and at one with others. Ultimately, it is being at one with God. It is this at one this atonement for which Jesus came. But this abundance of our hearts is not something altogether hidden. For abundance overflows, indeed it must overflow. But it is not some kind of smugness where we walk around with cheesy grins on our faces as if to say, look at me, aren't I special? I'm a Christian. Actually, too much smiling is always a danger. I have to say as a clergyman, before I was ordained, another ordained friend told me, of course you will smile at people with your collar on. But watch out on your day off and out of uniform, because if you carry on smiling at strangers in the street the same way, they'll think you're a complete nutter. So this is a particular form of abundance. It is not an abundance that we show, but an abundance that we share. Life abundantly means to give abundantly, to be generous abundantly, to care abundantly, to help abundantly, to understand abundantly, 
to sacrifice abundantly to love abundantly. It means that from the abundance of our hearts we should recklessly, foolishly, disproportionately, indiscriminately overflow. And the wonder and mystery of it is the more we share the abundance the more abundantly our hearts are filled. For this abundance flows through us and to us. It seeks us out in order that we may seek out others. It fills us in order that we may fill others. It flows to us in order that it might flow from us. It is our calling, our duty and our joy that we should have life abundantly. Let us therefore seek in all that we do with everyone we meet and throughout our lives to be abundant. Amen. So let us share our faith together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for our church, for ourselves and neighbours, and for the needs of the whole world. Father, we give you thanks for the Church, for its teaching and fellowship, for the breaking of bread together and for prayers that we share. Give us glad and generous hearts. Let us seek out and rescue the lost and the straying, aid the needy, uplift any who are fallen. Good Shepherd, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who walk in darkness and in the valley of the shadow of death. We remember all who are caught up in strife and violent conflict, all areas of great poverty, all areas of cruelty, indifference and evil or places where we have spoiled the environment. May we instead find ways that lead to joy and life in all its fullness. Good Shepherd, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you all those whose lives are restricted and impaired. We pray for the handicapped, the deaf, those who are blind or unable to speak. We pray for all who are in sickness and distress, that we might help where we can and ever hold them in our prayers when we cannot. Good Shepherd, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who are confined, unable to venture out due to risk and danger. We pray for those who need healing of past hurts and painful memories, for all who are bereaved through accident, crime or illness. We pray to you through Christ the Healer, 
for all who suffer from the coronavirus, COVID-19, in Ireland and across the world. Give wisdom to policymakers, comfort and encouragement to healthcare professionals and researchers, solace to everyone in distress and a sense of calm to us and all in these days of uncertainty and distress. Good Shepherd, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you have gone before us and shown us the way. We remember all those who have died in these recent days as we light a candle in our hearts to honour them and entrust them to God's mercy and loving welcome. May they fly straight home into God's embrace. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, for whom love was stronger than death. Amen. Together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, make clear to us each road. Make safe to us each step. When we stumble, hold us. When we fall, lift us up. When we are hard-pressed, deliver us and bring us at last to your glory. And may the living God remove the suffocating shroud that lies upon our world. May the risen Saviour draw the sting of death, bringing all to life in him. May the flowing Spirit set us and all creation free and seal our hearts with faith. And the blessing of God, Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, and all those whom you love, this day and every day. Amen. Let us go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.